very good morning to you guys. Welcome to Asake Online. This is the Breakfast Club. My name is Brighton. Over the past few weeks, there's been a lot of talk around the issues of Intung Jatuna, uh, that's the Bulawayo power plant. And residents have been echoing different sentiments and different meetings have been held to discuss uh, this future of the Bulawayo power plant. But joining me today this morning uh, to unpack his paper that is written around that uh, power plant in Bulawayo is Dr. Wayne Malinga, the policy and research manager from Predis here in Bulawayo. Good morning, Dr. Welcome to the show. Um, good morning, Brighton. Um, thank you so much for having me in the show. Let's talk about your, pol your paper, your paper about the Bulawayo power plant. In summary, what, what, what are you saying in the, in the paper? Um, basically, we are looking at um, the current issue. Um, I think it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a big issue when it comes to the city of Bulawayo, the decommissioning of the thermal power station. Um, so the paper is trying to zero down on the socio-economic implications, especially on the ordinary um, citizen. What are some of the challenges that are going, they are going to be confronted with as it pertains to the closure of that particular power station? Mm -hmm. um, so generally, we also want to look at the history of the power station, what has been its contribution in terms of maybe the economy of Bulawayo, um, and also its contribution in terms of power generation to the national grid. So those are some of the important questions. And remember, we are also looking at um, a power station that has been in, in existence since 1947. It was first commissioned then, and it was recommissioned yeah. in 1957. So we, we really have a long history with those six towers, if I can put it that way. Um, and apart from that, um, there are also now struggles between um, the Blauer City Council and also Zesa in terms of the ownership of that particular power station. Who, who owns it? Um, so if we look at the records accurately, um, it seems like the Blauer City Council is actually the owner of that particular station um, and it um, leased it to Zesa in 1987. Um, remember, Zesa also operates under certain policies and laws um, and it, is, it has been given the mandate to be the only uh, power utility or authority in the country, so it generates power. But if you remember, uh, prior to 1987, um, local authorities also had the mandate to actually generate power, but because policies change over time, um, even law changes over time, so this is where we see um, Zesa coming in in 1987 to take over um, the station. But at the present moment, um, what we have seen is that the station has not been viable um, since, I think, since March 2023, it hasn't generated anything. Um, but when it was commissioned in 1947, it had the potential to generate 90 megawatts. Mm -hmm. um, but if you refurbished, it has um, a potential to generate 120 megawatts. Mm -hmm. So we're now we're talking about the contribution um, to the national grid that this power thermal power station can actually make. Um, so these are just um, some of the generic um, interpretations that I've managed to come across in terms of us understanding um, the history of this power station, its contribution. Um, and if you also look at um, Ubulawe and its setup, if you remember, we at some point were an industrial hub. Um, in the country, we had so many industries. Um, and part of uh, the power was mm -hmm taken from that particular um, thermal power station. So already we have got these um, um, views in terms of what really has been the contribution of this particular yes, station. of this power plant generating uh, power for Bulawayo, right? But what has stopped it from generating power from Bulawayo? Speak of an issue of viability. What's, 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 what's the issue around that? Um, part of the reasons why it has stopped has been, one, the lack of um, investment. Um, we are seeing that um, some of the material is now old, the infrastructure is dilapidated, um, there's a need to refurbish um, and, and ensure that it can actually be viable. Um, and if you remember quite well, um, the coal is used in that particular station, um, but because we no longer have a viable railway system, it means we can't have coal being transported from Wanga to Bulawayo. Um, and another issue has been um, water um, in, in, when it comes to issues of cooling down. Um, but there are several discussions that why are we talking about the issue of water mm -hmm. when we've got Kami Reservoir or Kami Dam, which is just lying idle. Uh, there hasn't been any um, innovative idea that has been put in place to draw water from Kami mm -hmm. to ensure that we cool down our system. And, and, and I think over time we've also seen the abandonment of this particular power station by the power utility, that is Zesa. There hasn't been much that has been done in terms of investment, in terms of skills as well, because you need the personnel. Um, so these are really some of the challenges um, that we're seeing. Um, so it has really led to the station not being viable over the years. Mm -hmm. One of the, these towers gave rise to the name of the Bulawayo, right? So what are the impacts of uh, destroying or decommissioning uh, this power plant in terms of the Bulawayo as a brand, identity, culture, and so on? 
Yes. Um. So when we were growing up, I think if you remember that song by my driver, yeah. when I was talking about um going to Tuzia Tunga, yeah. um, it has been our heritage. It's our identity. It's part of who we are as a as a city. And so when you look at that, um, it means the decommissioning. Um, it would really um the the impetus that we get from that is we are going to lose our identity. We're not saying yeah. um, Bulawa is only identified by those towers, but what we're saying, this has been part of us and part of who we are for the past seven, seven years. Um, if you remember, um, I think it was um, a few years back, there was also the consideration to tear down those towers mm -hmm. and residents had to stand um, yeah. together um, against this whole idea of tearing and, say, and saying, but if, if it doesn't work, why tear down? Just leave the thermal stations or the cooling towers as they are. Would rather have them as a museum mm -hmm. than for it to be teared down. So this is this shows us how much it means to have those cooling towers in Malawi. But also if you look at those towers, look, look at the lifespan of those towers, is there a certain lifespan for those towers? Um, in, in terms of the lifespan, this is where we, we, we talk about the idea of refurbishing. Yeah. Um, that um, in a certain period of time, mm -hmm. you obviously expect um, that you refurbish, mm -hmm. you find new materials, you also go hand in hand with new technological innovations. But at the present moment, that structure, since it was established in 1947 and also recommissioned in 1957, it has stood like that. Um, and so part of my the deliberations that I did in preparing this paper, mm -hmm. um, there were discussions around that when Zesa took over in 1987, it hasn't added anything new, but instead the station has been deteriorating each year. So really it means there is a lot that is going on that needs to be addressed. And also there are discussions that there is a huge potential mm -hmm. in terms of the station being able to generate um, electricity, contributing to the to, our, to Bulawa and also contributing to the national grid. Mm -hmm. Now let's move on to the issue of ownership. I know it's been one of the one of, one of conditions around this issue of this power, power plant, right? Let's talk about ownership. Who owns that power plant? Um, the power plant, um, if we look at the records, they're actually owned by Wulawa City Council. Mm -hmm. um, I think that is what I had alluded to earlier on, that um, when we look at how it was leased yeah. to Zesa in 1987, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that Zesa doesn't own, but yeah. it's under a lease agreement. Um, and the agreement was that there were certain royalties that are supposed to be paid to the Bulawayo City Council. Um, so we expect that there are certain monies that were supposed to be um, generated by the City Council by leasing it out to Zesa. So these are now the arguments that are there. But at the same time, we also need to, to realize that we, we, at some point we need to get to the contents of that particular lease agreement. What is really con what is contained in, in that agreement? Mm -hmm. What are some of the pros? What are some of the cons? There's a need to really yeah. um, have that extent extensive um, um, research to, to actually find out what was agreed on. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope it's not word of mouth, but there is actually something that is written down in order to ensure that Blair City Council can tighten up its case in terms of the ownership. We can also talk about the issues of, of title deeds. Um, from, from my engagements with um, authorities in the council, it seems like there are title deeds for that um, thermal power station. So the idea now is then why don't we take back what belongs to the city council mm -hmm. so that it can be able to manage itself in terms of that power station? Mm -hmm. One a voice that is important in all this conversation is that of the residents of Bulawayo. What are they saying? I know we've been engaging them through BUPRA meetings, through press meetings. What are they saying about this power plant being decommissioned? Um, the residents are not happy. Um, I think one of the key issues is that they have not been consulted in this whole process. Um, from the onset, um, residents only woke up to news that there are considerations to decommission the plant. There were no consultations that were done, and there were no stakeholder engagements that were done with mm -hmm. um, either stakeholders in, in the city of Bulawayo. This is just a directive that came in that there is a consideration um, to decommission. But the residents are not happy. That is the first thing that I can say. And secondly, residents are saying, what then can we do in order to ensure that the power plant goes back to the city council? And at the same time, um, residents are saying, aren't there any other initiatives that we can put in place to resuscitate and revive that power plant? Can we not attract investors who can actually come in and ensure um, the station starts working? So these are the different ideas that residents have. But um, the bottom line is that they want the power station to start working again. They also want the power station to, um, be, to go back to the hands of yes. the city council so that it can properly manage it. Now let me bring the issue of the public-private partnerships, right? I'm sure you've seen many things happening in Bulai. We're now privatizing this, privatizing that. 
I do you think this works for like, in terms of look at the more for example, look at uh, the parking system for example. Does P triple P's work for Bula in for example? Um, at the present moment, and and and, the, and as a resident of Bulawayo, um, I haven't seen them working that much. Um, if you remember now, the the Kotini project has dragged for long. Mm -hmm. We did not anticipate that it was going to take so many yeah. years to actually finish the first phase. Remember, it's not yet complete. Um, and secondly, we also need to be cognizant of the fact that we also now have got TTI. Mm -hmm. And when you look at the, the agreements that were made, we're expecting to see uh, roads being resuscitated, expecting to see at least a better road network system. Yeah. But at the present moment, it's not yet working. So um, this is where the city council also has to draw the line mm -hmm. in terms of the lessons it has learned from the deals that already exist mm -hmm. in order to find better partners and in order to also ensure that legally they are able to be protected, they are also able to um, agree on certain conditions. But at the present moment, we are not seeing anything that is benefiting us as the city of Bulawe. If I go to the recommendations in your paper, there's the issue of decommissioning the power plant, and issue of rehabilitation of the power plant. What, which one works better for terms of that power plant? Speak about the issue of age in terms of uh, this durability and also the material being used there. What works, decommissioning or rehabilitating the power plant? Um, at, at the present moment, um, the whole idea of decommissioning, mm -hmm. it comes from the stance that has been taken by our government um, that is migrating to renewable energy. But renewable energy, remember, we haven't put any systems in place to ensure that we start mm -hmm. um, generating alternative um, energy sources. Mm -hmm. um, and at the same time, when we talk about um, this particular plant, um, the, the whole consensus amongst residents, amongst us academics, amongst CSOs, is that there is huge potential mm -hmm. of this station to actually generate. So why can't we look at rehabilitation instead of decommissioning? But at the same time, you also have got arguments from um, different schools of thought. There are others who talk about um, decarbonization, that there's a need to reduce our emissions. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we are also hypo we are now being hypocritical. I'm thinking when we look at how um, other countries, especially in the global north, they actually developed using fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And Africa is not yet ready um, to migrate to renewable energy. We haven't put any systems in place. Um, and I think in Zimbabwe, we do have an energy policy. We also do have a renewable energy policy. Um, but when we look at that, systems should be in place. Um, I think there was, um, during my discussions with residents, they even asked him the question, um, if you are going to decommission, what have you put in place as an alternative? Yeah. But at the present moment, it's just decommissioning. There hasn't been anything that has been put in place to ensure that we do not lose out on um, the energy that is already being contributed to the national grid through this power station. Mm -hmm. But what is the Minister of Energy and Power Development saying about all these things? What is this needs to generate power for Bulawa? But now you're facing Bulawa. What is the Minister of Energy saying about this decommission of this power plant? Um, the the ministry, and from what I have understood, um, is that they are really talking about decommissioning. Yep. Um, and repurposing at the same time. If we're decommissioning closure, uh, what other alternatives can we come up with in terms of ensuring that um, the power station um, can re re be repurposed? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there are now even um, ideas that there's a need for privatization, mm -hmm. um, which is quite um, rampant in this particular country. And at the same time, when you talk about privatization, who is going to take over that thermal power station? What power do they have? And what really are the um, criteria that are going to be used for an individual to take over? Um, whether is it an individual or is it a company? But at the same time, this is where we're arguing that um, why can't we have a discussion, an open um, discussion where we really need to trace what are some of the implications that we're going to have in terms of the decommissioning? What are some of the implications in terms of privatization? So these are the humongous challenges that we carry have at the present moment, but we haven't received any answers. So we so wish that we can have these discussions at length and ensure that residents are not left out in these discussions. They are able to own up um, and they're also able to be part of the process yeah. in terms of where do we uh, go from here in terms of this thermal power station. Um, so yes, there is um, a lot that is um, coming from the ministry in terms of uh, decommissioning, but at the same time, we really haven't looked at the pros and cons. It's just a consideration. Mm -hmm. If you just joining us, this is the Breakfast Club. Today on the show, I'm joined by Dr. Wayne Malinga, the Policy and Research Manager from Pris there, and picking his portion paper on the issue of decommissioning of the Wulawa power plant. But also, Dr. Malinga, there's someone watching the show right now, 
they don't know about this uh, blower power plant, them or whatever, they don't know about those things. And they don't know the advantage or benefits of these things are uh, being rehabilitated or decommissioned in Bolar. Let's talk about the issue of benefits. If we're going to rehabilitate this uh, thermal power plant, what are the benefits of the rehabilitating the power plant? Um, so by rehabilitating, um, if you remember quite well, I think at the present moment we are overly reliant, I uh, will emphasize on overly reliant on two mm -hmm. stations, that is Wange and also Kariba. And if you look at Kariba, we are struggling in terms of having water. Remember, that is hydroelectricity. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we also have got our own challenges yeah. at Wange, especially Unit 1 and 6, although we now have got Unit 7 and 8. Um, so we are finding out that as a country, we still have got deficit mm -hmm. in terms of ensuring enough um, power supply. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that deficit can actually be filled um, by these thermal power stations. But if we shut them down, mm -hmm. it means we are going to be importing more electricity mm -hmm. and this has implications on citizens, meaning we are going to be paying more, uh, paying high tariffs. Mm -hmm. um, so th these are some of the issues that we need to consider. Um, and at the same time, if we are able to generate any form of power from mm -hmm. our station, it means Bulawayo can be able to get electricity and so does the nation. So it means that deficit that we have, I think it's between 400 to 500 to 600 megawatts mm -hmm. that we import. Why can't we be able to ensure that we leave or we close that vacuum by ensuring these thermal power stations are able to contribute to the national grid? On the sector of tourism, I've seen these uh, towers in South Africa where they have these towers, they paint them, you know, people, they, are, they contribute to tourism and so on. Can those power towers in Bulawayo also contribute towards tourism in Bulawayo? Yes. Um, remember, we've talked about how iconic they are. Um, so when we look at those six towers, it's not only just um, a power station, mm -hmm. but to us it means our identity, it means yeah. who we are, um, and it also reminds us of the once industrialized city yeah. of Bulawayo at some point. And remember, our industries were actually benefiting immensely mm -hmm. um, from getting power from that particular station, so it, it really means a lot. If it means um, citizens have to um, go and clear the land there, refence it, or um, ensure that um, it starts looking like a, a, a power station that is working. It's quite crucial and it's quite important. And so, um, really, these are iconic. Um, we need to preserve them by all means. Um, so, the city of Bulawayo is at the brink of losing um, its identity. Um, we have already lost our identity as an industrial hub at some point, and now we're going to lose our identity as, as, as um, uh, through those six iconic um, cooling towers. So we, we are really at a disadvantage at the present mm -hmm. moment. We'll probably stakeholder meeting where the core residents will come, academics, uh, your uh, politicians as well. I saw the, mini uh, the not the minister, I saw the MP for Bula Central was there as well, a uh, former deputy mayor of Bula was there as well. What are they saying about the issue of Bula power plant? For example, what is the MP for Bula Central saying about that power plant? Um, wh what we're saying is that there is um, a need to resolve this matter as soon as possible. There's also a need to ensure that Bulawayo stands and Bulawayo also um, ensures that the power station goes back to the hands of the city council. And at the same time, we also need to do our own research and get experts who are going to be able to go to that site and ensure that they tell us what is wrong, what can be fixed, what can be replaced. Because at the present moment, we also need to have that kind of assessment mm -hmm. so that we know and take a decision at the city of Bulawayo. Um, and at the same time, we also um, need to ensure that um, whenever we are resuscitating and trying to revive, let there be investors yes. who are going to come in and ensure that the power station starts working. And remember, some industries need to be resuscitated. Mm -hmm. Why can't we start by the power station and ensure that whenever we want to attract investors, we already have got power. Yes. Uh, that is enough um, to supply our industries, ensure that we've got job creation. And so the, the, really there is a lot that will stands to lose by the closure or the decommissioning of that power station. Lastly, what are your recommendations from your portion paper around that Bulawayo power plant? Um, so part of the recommendations um, that I had made is that, one, um, there's a need to ensure we refurbish um, that power station and get it back to its um, state where it's going to be able to generate power. Um, secondly, there's also a need to ensure that in whatever processes we're doing, uh, let residents be involved yep. in it. Um, we also need political will, especially from our councillors, our MPs, um, to ensure that they relate with the information to the powers be, 
um, to ensure that um, we stand together and um, share our idea of why there is no need to decommission. Um, and at the same time, um, we are to also talking about that there's a need to assess it, yeah. the station, to assess what, what is still viable, what can be fixed. Um, it, that should be done as soon as yesterday. Um, that is also quite important. So these are generally some of the ideas. And also we need to update our policies. Mm -hmm. um, I think our, our bylaws and also maybe some of the policies that we have, mm -hmm. they also need to be in sync with the current mm -hmm. status quo. Um, there's a need to not have a fragmented system mm -hmm. where policies are, are old and then the status quo is speaking to different challenges. Mm -hmm. So there's a need to actually um, update that. And also advocates and lobbying, um, especially by residents um, working together with other stakeholders, um, the CSOs, um, uh, we do have our politicians, uh, we do have even investors. and So there's a need to really have advocates and lobbying, mm -hmm. um, especially in, in trying to um, conscientize what are some of the um, cons and some of the pros when we decommission um, that thermal power station. So these are generally some of the recommendations that I, I had put together in order to um, and should, in order for people to realize the socio-economic implications. But also, Dr. Malinga, there's an the aspect of uh, transparency and accountability that's missing in terms of our leaders when it comes to these issues. Do you think there's transparency in terms of that power plant and accountability in terms of those who are in charge of that power plant? Be it the Minister of Energy, be it the ZES, do you think there's transparency and accountability in terms of the work that has been done there? Um, so far, there hasn't been any form of transparency and also accountability. Um, remember, the first case is that um, the decommissioning was only told um, via news outlets um, to residents in Bulawayo without any consultation. It shows you that there is really no transparency. And at the same time, we don't even know what ZESA has been doing since 1987 mm -hmm. um, in, order, in terms of records to show us what it has replaced, what it has done to improve that station. There isn't any form of transparency and accountability. It even goes further, not only to us residents, but even to the employees of ZESA. Remember, we have a high likelihood that there are people who are going to lose their jobs yeah. through the decommissioning of, of thermal power stations, not only in Bulawayo but also in Arare and also in Mnyati. They haven't been told anything. Mm -hmm. um, so we really don't have, we have a crisis in terms of transparency and accountability issues when it comes to governance. Um, so uh, as long as these are missing ingredients, then we are never going to achieve anything. Dr. Malenga, thanks so much for your time this morning joining us on The Breakfast Club. Thank you so much, Frighton, for having me. Thank you. Well, guys, there we have it. You've been watching The Breakfast Club. I was talking to Dr. Wade Malenga, the public and the research poly a manager from PRIS, talking about the decommissioning of the Bulawayo power plant and explaining to us this portion paper around that, the pros and cons, the implications of decommissioning that power plant. I hope you guys enjoy the show and to follow the site on YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, as well as uh, other platforms that are there on social media platforms. Do enjoy the show, guys.